Because I'm so closed when it comes to like speaking about certain things, you know what I mean? So they just really probably thought those things didn't even affect me or I didn't think about them at all. So they were kind of shocked. First and foremost, I want to say good evening, Mr. Bonkers. Good evening. How's things going today? Yeah, not too bad, man. All good. Yeah? We were talking that like, we've had a bit of battle before, and I was saying that like, this is you're one of the minds that needs to be explored. Mm. Um, so I want to kind of like recount from the beginning, because there's parts of your journey that I'm not too familiar with. So were you, were you born and raised in Thornton? Um, yeah, well, I was born in Gypsy Hill which isn't far from there, but I moved to Fulton Heath when I was about 10. So like, all my teenage years were kind of like spent in Fulton Heath. But Gypsy Hill was like 10 minutes away anyway. And school, what was school life like for you? Um, it was fun. I weren't really, I weren't really academic like that. I used to like English literature, because it's like, there's no right or wrong answer. Do you know what I mean? You can just interpret something however you want. but. Everything else, I just weren't really interested. Like, I didn't see how I was ever going to use those things in life. Do you know what I mean? So I weren't really into it. I was more of a class clown than anything. Do you think like, cause I, it's funny you say that because I remember when I was at um, secondary school, I felt like that when it came to German, I was like, I'm not going to speak German. Yeah. Where's it going to go? But being a class clown, like, at what point did you now have to start realizing that life is serious? Um. After school, yeah. <laughs> After school, man. Um, college was air to me. It's just, I don't know, it's weird, man. Like, I definitely encourage people to take the necessary steps in order to do whatever you want to do. But there was only really one thing that I wanted to do. Like, once I hit, like, probably 11, and I realised I wasn't going to be a footballer. It was like, there was only one other thing that I was going to do, do you know what I mean? So even, like, work experience didn't do it. It's just pointless to me, do you know what I mean? English literature is the only thing that I really feel like kind of affected who I am as an artist, and that's what I really wanted to do. So you just, what, you just said you're not doing it? You just stayed at school for work experience? Or? Um, I just stayed at home. <laughs> yeah, I, I basically acted like I was like applying and not getting anything back, do you know what I mean? So then when it got too late, and then I just ended up staying at home, really. And chilling, writing bars. Oh, so yeah. around that time, he was already cultivating your art. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, from probably mm, early, man. Like, I, I feel like I've always been able to, like, like, anytime someone put on a beat, everyone would kind of look at me. Do you know what I mean? I've always kind of been that guy. So, I say from, like, all through secondary school, I think I was writing bars and, like, started recording in, like, year eight, year nine or something like that. I want to talk about obviously um, quality control. Mm. Like, how many years ago did you make that? Um, don't know. It feels like about four now, maybe five. Yeah, okay. quite a while ago, isn't it? It's advanced, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. I feel like it's, it was like my first ever project. So for me to just come on it and just act like the man. It would have just been crazy, do you know what I mean? It's like, I can't remember how old I was, but I knew like I had my whole life before that, and that was like the beginning of like my musical career. So for me to not touch on like as many things as possible in that project would have just been like a waste of time to me, if you know what I mean? So there was a lot of different subjects, and I think maybe that's just what made it advanced, just the fact that I spoke about so many things and like opened up so much, whereas a lot of people wouldn't really open up or put their like insecurities or vulnerabilities in the music, do you know what I mean? Can we explore um, a couple of the tracks on there? Yeah, definitely. My mind. Um, take me through conceptually what was going around in that time period when you um, was penning that track. Um, I think there's just a lot of things that I don't really speak about, do you know what I mean? Like even like family issues or like there might be a death in the family and I won't speak about it with anyone. That's just kind of how I am. But I heard this Janae Aiko song and like the lyrics in the chorus just really like resonated with me. So I basically sent the song to um, Panero, Panero Beats 
And I was like, basically, can you like take the chorus and basically sample it and put it in the chorus and make a beat around it? Because I want to spit like some things. And he done it, sent it back to me. And it was like the easiest song I've ever written because I had like all of these thoughts in my head that I haven't even spoken about with like my mum or anyone. So it was just so easy to write. Like I could have had 10 verses for that song. Do you know what I mean? It was so easy, but it was just yeah, me talking about a lot of deeper stuff, a lot of things that I've been through or whatever that I just felt like I had to get off my chest, especially in that first project. Is there any verses or parts of the song that stood out to you? Um, yeah, the part where I was talking about my little cousin, he passed away because I haven't had the conversation with anyone, do you know what I mean? So it was kind of like, it was kind of deep like to just to even say it and I kind of went over it a few times and thought like, Will I be comfortable performing this or even like recording this? But I just went with the line anyway. But yeah, that bit stands out to me. So like, when you write that type of song, when do you know when to put the pen down? Because like you said, it could have been ten. Months I don't even pick a pen up. You don't? No, man, I ain't written anything down in years. I just think it's easier for me. It's more, it's more natural. I feel like the writing is. It takes me back to like school almost. It's like becomes a chore. Do you know what I mean? I have to write this down and structure it and when I just I just create it in my head so I could literally like that song I wrote that song well I came up with that song in my kitchen and I was just sitting there for like about an hour or so and it's more repetition so when I'm like spitting a line say I've got four lines to get the fifth line I'll probably just repeat the first four over and over again and the fifth one will just kind of roll off the tongue so with that repetition that's how I just remember it. So I can go studio like a week, two weeks later, and as long as I start spitting it, if, if I remember the first line, the rest of it will just flow, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, with that one, like I said, I could have had about 10 verses, man. It's just, I don't know, once I finish the second verse, really, do you know what I mean? The chorus is already there with the um, Janae Aiko sample. And it's just like, once I finish the second verse, I was just like, yeah, that's it, I didn't want to, keep going, I didn't want to put too much out, you know what I mean? You said you also directed the video, right? Yeah. So how did you go about that? I mean, did you have any experience of directing or you just... Um, no, I just said, because the song was so personal to me, I, I would have felt funny just allowing someone else to be like, right, this is what we're going to do with it, do you know what I mean? So I just directed the video and it was more like me kind of exploring the, the frustrations and the deeper thing, so I was kind of like, I think in the video, something happened, like I got a phone call, and I've kind of left my house, I've gone like, jumped on the train and everything, like, before I leave the house, I'm packing like a rucksack, and it looks as though I'm going to like, do something crazy, but then at the end, I just get to like this destination, which is like my quiet place, and then I just sit down, and all I really want to do is like, write songs and reflect, do you know what I mean? So it's basically just about kind of escaping from like just the crowds and the noise, you know what I mean? That's like really what it was, just finding a space to kind of just reflect on my own. So yeah, I just didn't want to let anyone else just direct the video and just turn it into one of those kind of things. It's funny because, well, it's interesting I should say that I'm only coming across this type of music now, obviously mm. because of um, you know, on the block. By the time when it came out, like, what was the actual feedback from like your peers or even your family when they first heard it? From my mind. Yeah, just the whole thing. Um, yeah, family wise everybody was kinda like shocked. I remember my sister saying to me like she didn't even think that I thought about a lot of those things. Do you know what I mean? And my mum kinda felt the same. Because I'm so closed when it comes to like speaking about certain things, do you know what I mean? So they just really probably thought those things didn't even affect me or I didn't think about them at all. So they were kind of shocked. Um, the feedback from like fans and supporters and stuff was amazing. And they were really like supportive as well. Just like, I can't believe that you said this or you said that or you've been through this and that. There were people like, yo, I've been through that as well. Or I've lost a family member recently. And even now people still tweet me and they're like, yo, this song just gets me through. Like, gets me through hard times or whatever, and that's really important for me. So moving forward, so from there, doing that project, to kind of like where we are now. Mm. Um, in that space, we're still creating music. 
um, what from quality control until now, you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've always, like, always, I've always been, like, making songs and coming up with things. I don't think there's really been a period, especially since then, that I haven't been doing something, do you know what I mean? When you, when you look at it now, right, because <coughs> obviously we have things like social media, you know, you, you have said it before, everyone wants to kind of be a star. Mm. Um, why do you think you've been able to cut through? Because you have a unique look, you don't dress like people in the ends, you mm. your own style. Um, why do you feel that like people have gravitated towards you? Um, I don't know, I think it's because I'm just being myself really, do you know what I mean? Like in terms of not dressing like everyone and not maybe not making music the same as everyone, I think that's my responsibility. Like, I want to give people confidence, you know what I mean? Like, I, I would literally go to the ends where everybody's dressed a certain way, similar to maybe how I'm dressed today, and like, I'll just go on a flamboyant one, dress completely different, but there isn't someone there that can tell me how to be me, do you know what I mean? Someone can't be like, yo, why are you wearing that? Like, there's only ever going to be one of you, ever. Someone can't teach you how to be someone that's never existed, do you know what I mean?